Luke chapter 6 tonight, Luke chapter 6. We have completed the character studies of the 12 apostles, and I hope that you got from that series that God can use us too. He uses just ordinary people, and He can mold and make us into something that is useful if we will yield ourselves to Him. Uh, tonight we'll see Jesus healing many people from our passage of Scripture, or in our passage. Uh, this is not the first time, and nor will it be the last time that we see uh, Jesus healing people. Uh, it was a regular part of His, his ministry. Jesus, I believe, has the answer, or it could be better put, Jesus is the answer for all the problems of life, and we're going to see His ability to heal from this passage of Scripture. Luke chapter 6, if you found your place and are physically able, please join me in standing for the reading of our text, Luke chapter 6, verses 17 through verse 19. And he came down with them and stood in the plain, and the company of his disciples, and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem, and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went out virtue out of him. And I want you to notice this phrase, and he healed them all. Jesus is able to heal far more than just the physical needs of people. He's able to heal those wounds that we would say are spiritual or even emotional or psychological or whatever these uh, these problems that we have and these infirmities, uh, Jesus is able to heal them. I believe He has the answer uh, for all of the problems of life. And we're going to see uh, from that phrase, uh, again, thinking of this, that, that, that He healed them all, everyone that came to Him. No matter what the problem was, Jesus was sufficient for that need. And I want to share some things I hope will be a help to us tonight. Father, we pray that you would bless the Word of God as we study tonight, that you would teach us, that you would remind us as we frequently need uh, to be reminded of uh, even some very simple truths. I pray that should there be someone under the sound of my voice who has never been healed of the great spiritual disease of, of sin that separates from God, that they would come to know Christ as their Savior tonight. And then, Father, all of us have some challenges or problems and difficulties in life. And I pray that we would find hope in the Lord Jesus Christ that, that He can take care of all of our problems. Equip us, I pray, by using the message tonight to be able uh, to equip us to help others who are struggling and, and need to find the answers for uh, life's perplexing questions and problems. I pray that you would help us tonight to realize that Christ really is all we need. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you so much for standing. I want you to notice, first of all, the, as we look in our passage, the ability of Jesus Christ to heal. In verse 17, there, were a great, or there was a great multitude of people. There were many people uh, there. Uh, he had just called his uh, 12 apostles out of that group of disciples. And now they're coming down off that mountain. And the Bible says that he stood there in the company of his disciples. So he's, he's got those 12 apostles. And then there are other disciples there as well. And then also a great multitude of people out of all Judea, that, that province, uh, they came from the, the little towns of, of Tyre and Sidon. And they had come because I believe that they knew where to get what they needed. They went to the Lord Jesus Christ. They came because they had problems. 
I want you to notice that they came to hear him and to be healed. In verse 17, the latter part of the verse, they came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Probably most of them came more to be healed than to hear. As most people are today, they go to God because they have problems that they need solved. And so, God, I want you to solve my problem. If it's a physical problem, a spiritual matter, if it's a, a financial a challenge or whatever it might be, people go to God and they want God to do this for them. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with us praying and asking the Lord to take care of those needs. But notice the Bible says that they came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Most of our problems of life would be taken care of if we would just choose to listen to him. In listening to him, we need to be doers of the word, the Bible says, and not just hearers only. And so uh, when our pro in solving our problems, we need to go to the Word of God, listen to what the Lord Jesus Christ says, what the Bible teaches, and then we need to do what He says, and most of our problems would be taken care of. The last place that people go when all else fails, they'll go and They'll call the pastor and say, Pastor, I, we've, got a, we've got a situation. Can you help? They'll come and sit across the desk and uh, the husband says, fix her. The wife says, fix him. Now, they don't say it in those terms, but that's exactly how I interpret what they are asking to be done. And so um, what, what, what I do is, is, is the first time I, I'll, I'll listen and listen to what they have to say. And then I'll give this assignment. And I'll say, I want you to go to Ephesians chapter number 5. And I want you to begin in verse 21 and read down to the end of the chapter. I want you to do that together. I want you to do that uh, separate. I want you to write down on a piece of paper separately. Uh, because there's some instruction to husbands. There's some instruction to wives. And I want you to... Write down the instructions that are given to you, that God gives to you, not to your spouse, because we know what they need. <laughs> you already know that. You don't need God to tell you. You know what they need. And so I want you to find out what the Bible says you have to do or, or what, what is directed to you. And that's all the assignment. That's it. And then I want you to get together and I want you to talk about it and talk about your responsibilities, not theirs. And then... Make a commitment that you're going to do what God tells you to do in that family. Uh, invariably, I have couples come back two weeks later. Two weeks later, mind you. Two weeks. And I'll say, um, uh, how, did, how did the lesson go? Oh, we didn't have time. You, you didn't have time to read 15 verses? Now, I don't say that. But here's what I do say. You're, 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 you're expecting a quick fix to a problem that you think is sitting across from you when in fact the answer to solving your, your relationship problem is the one you look at in the mirror every day. You fix that one and let God fix that one. Our problem is we try to fix our spouse or someone else and, and they don't get fixed the way that we have this ideal a fixed individual and what they look like and how they treat you. And so we're continually trying to fix someone else when if we would just fix ourselves. You say, but what if they don't get fixed? No, wait, wait, wait. If we fix ourselves, then God enables us to live with someone who isn't fixed. The problem is we're not fixing ourselves. Well, they don't like that, and they usually don't come back. And so I limit my counseling to two sessions. <laughs> First one, give you the assignment. Second one, tell you you didn't do it and go your way. No, it's not really that simple, is it? Do you know that really, I'll be honest with you, the biblical principles are laid out pretty simply. 
They're not difficult to understand. They're just difficult to implement sometimes because we're stubborn. We're, we're um, self-centered. We want our will. We're like that little child in the nursery. Mine! <laughs> I want! And that is the problem. Now, if we just would listen to God, the Bible says, if ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. If you just do what God says, if we would just do it. You say, preacher, that's good preaching, but hard living. I know, isn't it? I think most of us know far more about what the Bible teaches than we are implementing in our personal relationships. So I make the statement that they came to hear him, and if they would hear him, and if we would hear him and do what he says, most of our problems would be taken care of. Do you know why? If we fix this person, then when these problems come, then we are in a better state of mind and spiritual condition to be able to handle those problems when they come. You say, that's just too simplistic. I think that the Bible really is just that it's simple. It really is. Now, they came to hear, but they also came, they came to be healed. And uh, they were sick and they wanted to be healed. Uh, Jesus was able to heal uh, any type of issue that they had. In verse 17, we see that they had physical diseases. It says they came to be healed of their diseases. Uh, Jesus is recorded in Scripture as healing many types of physical diseases diseases and infirmities. Uh, Jesus made the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the dead to live again. Jesus Christ is able to heal these physical problems and diseases. Now, so we have a lengthy prayer list and someone will say, is Jesus able to heal today? And I think he is. I don't think he gives any person the ability to heal. And I know even these faith healers say, well, God doesn't give me the ability. He just works through me. And that's nonsense. Uh, if God wants to heal, he'll heal without you getting whacked on the head by Benny Hinn or one of the other um, faith healers. Why doesn't God heal everyone then? That's a good question. It's a good question. Uh, when you get to heaven, you can ask him. Because you don't have that answer, and neither do I. The Bible doesn't give us that answer. Now, God's plan may include somebody having some physical infirmity. Paul prayed three times, God, deliver me from this thorn in the flesh. Deliver me, deliver me. And God said, no. No. Well, I thought you were God. You're supposed to do what I want. Now, wait a minute. If he's God, then why would he do what we want? But Paul didn't respond to God in that way like many times we do. Paul responded by saying, okay. Uh, uh, God said, Paul, when you're weak, then you're strong. Paul said, well, glory to God. Then I'll glory in my infirmities. I preached to the Africans a sermon that I entitled, Paul, you must be mad, not angry. But crazy, <laughs> crazy. Paul realized that God was sovereign, God's in control, and if God allowed it into my life, and God said that my grace is sufficient, and you're going to be better through, because of this, and then, then, then there's a reason. And you know, sometimes um, Paul said, lest I should be exalted above measure because of the abundance of revelations, he was given this thorn in the flesh. And so he even acknowledged that, uh, that the reason was, so I don't become proud. Uh, you know, God has a way of, of dealing with our pride. But as I think about why doesn't God heal everyone, do you know there's only one way for us to get to heaven uh, besides the Lord Jesus Christ coming? And that's through death. In order to die, you have to get sick, right? Have a heart attack, get cancer, get an automobile accident. I, I mean, you just, you have to die. So then we can't say that God wants to heal everybody. 
Well, maybe God wants to take them home. And so he's going to use that to take them home. I don't know. But I do know that he can heal. And many times he uses medical science to do that. And um, some of you have had heart issues. I, Lester had a heart issue. And Tim uh, had a heart issue. And um, I'm looking all over. Most of you have heart issues over here of a spiritual nature. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. But, but some of you know what I mean. You've, you've been in the hospital. You know. You've, you've been through some of those difficult things. And you, you know that God is able to heal. He's able to do that. But not only did Jesus heal all these physical diseases, but I want you to notice also in verse 18 that there were some that had unclean spirits. They were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed. This is a different nature than those that have physical ailments. It would be like the father who had the son. And he came to Jesus and uh, kneeled down and said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. My son's possessed with his demon. Or perhaps like the mother with the daughter, and the woman of Canaan came out of the same coast. She cried unto the Lord and said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Jesus is able to heal those behavioral issues, uh, whether they are of a spiritual nature or they are just simply of a rebellious nature. God is able uh, to take a rebel and, and, and make him righteous. Uh, we think about the son of uh, the uh, rich, the, the man that had at least some some semblance of wealth. And his son said, Father, give me what's due to me. I want my inheritance now. And dad gave it to him. Went off into a far country, wasted his substance on riotous living, and then ended up feeding the swine and wanting to eat the, the husks that the swine were eating. And then he came to himself and he said, I'm going to go home. I'm going to apologize to my father and, and just be one of the servants because they're better off than I am. And he went back, and what did he find? His father was waiting for him, and his father wanted him to return. And so now here's a rebel son that has returned. Ooh, that, that is God doing that. Today, people are controlled by many things, by drugs, alcohol, anger, and sexual immorality. Whatever the, the sin is, Jesus is able to heal from any of the problems of life. He's able he surely is. And so when we see somebody whose life is a wreck and their home is a disaster, that home needs Jesus Christ. No, they don't need somebody to pay their electric bill. They need Jesus Christ to come in and change their life. Now, it might be that they need the electric bill paid, and that's going to be the thing that causes them to humble themselves before God. It might be that they're laid up in the hospital bed and the only place that they can look is up. And they finally give God a little bit of acknowledgement and say, God, I'm, I'm listening. But uh, the Lord is able to heal any type of issue that uh, people have. And so the Lord's ability to heal is uh, only limited by their desire to be healed. The only limitation there is on, on God's ability to work in someone's life is the desire for God to work in our lives. You know, we can, we can say yes to God and that God will work. But if we say no to God, then we're going to be miserable. Uh, we're not going to be happy. God's dealing with our hearts. We need to say yes. Now, these people, they, they did have a desire to be healed. They knew where to get their help. So they went to Jesus. They wanted what Jesus could do for them. Now, some of them just came for the healing, no doubt. But their, but, but their coming gave the Lord the opportunity to speak. And so we use those opportunities. I... Um, 
you have to understand the, the statement that I'm going to make. You have to understand it in context. I like preaching funerals. I hate preaching weddings. You say, why? I, 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 funerals are great. You've got a captive audience here. They're here. They don't want to be here. I guess maybe the same thing in a wedding. I don't know if it's a shotgun <laughs> wedding or not. Funerals, uh, weddings are, are, are serious business. They're serious business because now these people are going to live together for the rest of their life. And you as a preacher have kind of given them a foundation that, okay, these are some biblical principles that you need to build your marriage on. And if it doesn't work out, then guess who would feel a little bit of responsibility for that? Did I train them enough? Did I give them enough information? Did I, did I, did I tell them about that? Did I tell them about that problem that they're going to have? <laughs> Funerals, guess what? You preach it, they're done. Set. They'll never give you another trouble. <laughs> Families do. Families do. Um, I, I preached at funerals. I, I remember preaching a funeral, and this fellow said to me, he said, um, lived right across the street. His mother was a member of our church. I found out one time, Kenny Price and I went over to look at that house. It was for sale on the corner of Bernard and, and Overlook. And Kenny said, let's go look at it. I said, we don't have any money. He said, let's go look at it anyway. And so we went and looked at it with no money. And the guy took us around. He showed us. We went in the basement. And then we found out that his mother was a longtime member. He was in a nursing home. He was mad because we didn't visit. Well, I said, I'm sorry. We surely will visit. And uh, we tried to witness to him. And he, he, he ushered us out of the house. He didn't want to hear it. So anyway, we did. We went to visit her mother at Hanover House Nursing Home. And uh, it was probably, I don't know if it was six months or a year later. wasn't too awful long after that encounter. She died. And I talked to her in the nursing home about her salvation, and she knew Christ as her Savior, and, and uh, uh, she, was, she, she was ready to go. She wasn't afraid to go, and she died. And so I get a call from the funeral director. I, this lady died, and uh, they'd like you to do the funeral. I said, okay. I phoned the son and said, I'm sorry about your mother. And uh, I'll be preaching the funeral. Do you have any instructions for me? He said, only one. I don't want you preaching how to get saved. I don't know where this came from. It must have been a bad day for me because I said, well, if you don't want me to preach that, then I'm not preaching your mother's funeral. Find someone else. I don't know where that came from. I must have been mad, <laughs> cranky that day. Didn't have coffee or something. I don't know. Uh, he said, what? Well, wait, wait, wait. I said, look, I, I'm not trying to argue with you, but I knew your, your mother after you, you said we didn't visit, and I did. I visited her several times. She was a saved woman. She was ready to go to heaven, and if you have me preach that funeral, I'm going to tell her story that she got saved, and she would want anybody here to get saved. He said, okay, but don't take too long. He was right there, not in this building, but in the, in the, in the funeral home chapel. What, not very many people there. She was old uh, when she passed away. And I preached, and I preached, and I preached. Now, I've never seen him again, but I preached at him one time. And so I like preaching funerals. <laughs> you know, some people have a desire only to get something from God, but this is what they need to get from God. They need to get the gospel. They need to get... They need to get the answer for their problem is not pay my electric bill. It's not give me money. It's not even heal my body. But God may use those problems to get people to recognize their greater need is a spiritual need. Now some people today, again, will go and they'll go and it'll be an opportunity for God to speak to their hearts. And you know what? Some of those funerals, uh, I've had people say, thank you. I haven't heard that for a long time. Or those opportunities that people are coming for, whatever this reason, but they're there and they're hearing the Word of God. They're hearing the Word of God. Um, Brian's here. 
Uh, that rascal never came to church very much. He never did. His, he'd come on Mother's Day with his grandmother sat over here, Helen Murray. And it really wasn't until after Helen died that he got active in church. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, you can ask him his testimony. But, I, um, you know, it, it, grandmother's not there anymore. She tried to get him in church all the time. And he would come on Mother's Day and special occasions. And then I tried to get him in his house, and he'd hide from me. <laughs> no, I'd visited them. They had that uh, house down in Strasburg, the way out in the country, in a log cabin. And, um, but the occasion of, of whatever it is, uh, uh, may, maybe it's a death of someone. Uh, maybe it's a hospital visit or hospital stay. Maybe it's a, an accident, a bad thing that's taking place. Whatever that thing is, at least... Hey, maybe they'll listen to the Word of God now. Maybe they'll listen. And sometimes, though, good things will happen. Positive things will happen. I believe that we need to know where to go to get help for our problems. And go to Jesus. He's the answer, isn't he? We need to listen to his Word. Now, I want to give you uh, just a couple of... um, uh, you, you, you can read James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25, and it says to be doers of his word. But I want to show you just at the end of this chapter, uh, just these few verses, and we'll be finished. In verse 46 of Luke chapter 6, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and digged deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not. It's like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So here's the analogy that Jesus gives, that when someone hears the word of God, here's here's the solution to your problem. When someone hears the word of God, it's like a man, and, and does it, implements it. It's like a man building his house on a solid foundation out of the right material, and and the the, the, the floods come, the rains come, the storms come, and beat upon that house, but it stands strong. That's like your life. The storms of life are going to come. And when we implement the principles of the Word of God, we hear what the Bible says and then we heed it and endeavor to practice it in our lives, then our lives are not going to crumble when these storms come. But if we hear the Word of God and... (sighs) Isn't he finished yet? No, no, I got another 35 minutes now. Now, sometimes we, we hear the word, but we don't do it. We don't heed it. It's like it's in one ear and out the other. Then, when these troubling times come, then we get all anxious and nervous about it. We get angry. We get upset instead of being patient. And waiting on the Lord. You know, God has the solution. He has, the Word of God has the answers for all of our problems. And those who want help for a problem, they have to desire to be healed. Yeah, I want to be helped. God has that answer for me. That's what I want. You see, if someone doesn't want it, you can't force it on them. You can't. It's like that man sitting on the front row when I preach the gospel. He's as lost afterwards as he was before, and he's as lost today as he's ever been. Unless he humbles himself before God, and he won't. He's a God-hater. I hope that he'll get saved before he dies. He's had at least one chance to get saved. He didn't want to hear it, but he had to. I hope that he'll heed that message one day. And I don't even remember his name. But God knows who he is. And I hope he'll get saved. 
But there are others who realize their great need and say, oh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I don't know where you are in your life. Have you realized that God has brought you to the place that you are maybe tonight to get you to make a decision to receive Christ as your Savior? You need to be saved if you've never trusted Christ. And then if you have a problem, you have a need, I want to direct you to Jesus who can meet any need. Again, I, I close with that statement that the Bible says, and he healed them all. And he's able to heal whatever uh, ails you tonight. Join me in standing, please, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Jesus is able to heal physically. And any other need that we may have, he's able to heal. And we need to take that message to a hurting world, don't we? They're looking to all kinds of sources to get what they, they need, some relief and some hope and some help. And the only sure, lasting solution is a personal relationship with God through salvation which is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bless the invitation. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and what he was willing to do for us on the cross of Calvary. I pray that should there be someone under the sound of my voice who has never received Christ, that this would be the night of their salvation. And then, Father, I know that there are many problems and difficulties that people have in life. We meet them every day in the workplace, in the places of education, and wherever we go, in the restaurants, and house to house and person to person we meet them and they're struggling and they need help and they need hope and we have that message and I pray that we'd take it to a lost and dying world there may be someone right here who needs a message of hope and I pray they'd find it in Jesus Christ because Christ really is all we need bless the invitation for it's in Christ's name we pray amen